Welcome to this care collab video. Here are the list of the participating channels. You can find the links to their videos in the description below. Today we will be looking into the general care of the butterfly orchid, my successes and failures. This genus naturally occurs in the northern and central part of South America. The species mainly grow in the humid tropical rainforests up to approximately 800 meters high. Day temperatures here range between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius all year round and the humidity is high, going up to 100% at night. They grow epiphytically on moss-covered tree branches. They love bright light but are never exposed to full sun. Once these orchids were in the mulier section of Oncidium but now they are put into their own separate genus, Psychopsis. They have rounded but quite flattened pseudobulbs that hold only one of the 30 cm long leaf that's quite thick and leathery. Because of the high humidity, they don't need to store much water in their pseudobulbs in nature, something to keep in mind when we grow them. Their large single flowers, in mainly orange and yellow, and the fact that they can bloom on the same spike for over 10 years makes them a challenge for us orchid growers. There are only four species in this genus, mainly differing in plant size and flower shape and size. However, there are several interspecies hybrids available. These seem far easier to grow and bloom. Most species also have an alba or albescence form. And by crossing the species, also a perioric form appeared. Although the leaves on the species are mainly blotched with purplish brown, some hybrids show fully green leaves. These seem to be more tolerant for home growing in my experience. Through trial and error, I decided to bring all but one of my psychopsis into the grow tent. Here, steady high temperatures up to 30 degrees and humidity ranging from 55 to 85 percent seems to do the plants good and some that were really going down are starting to recover and grow again. So let's take them out for a closer look. Here are a few of my better and worst successes or failures. Great success with these mounted Psychopsis Vestegiana. These import plants from Peru were only mounted seven weeks ago and the new roots are growing and the plants are establishing themselves. This species has thinner and more narrow leaves than the other species. The small rounded pseudobulbs grow very close together. Here another Verstegiana, a real disaster. This plant came in in a very bad condition from orchids and more in Germany. The plant was infested with crawly creatures, had only one leaf and all roots were dead. It was potted in a very soggy wet and stinking small bark mix. I tried to revive it and although it doesn't look like it, it seems to want to live and trying to push out a new growth. If it does, it's at least five years from flowering. These are two seedling plants from a trusted nursery here in Belgium. I've had them since last year and the damage was done by me due to underwatering. However, they are thriving now and new growths are popping up all over. As for the media I use, well, I've had plants in a bark and charcoal mix, a small lava rock mix with perlite and charcoal, bark and cocoa mix and have them mounted with Cintiq and moss. 
all media or growing methods seems fine as long as the basic needs for the plants are met. I've also grown them in plastic and terracotta pots. Their basic needs are warm and humid growing conditions, good airflow and, very important, air replacement, accompanied with good light, meaning almost Cattleya light but never in full sun. Yet another disaster of mine. This one was left unattended in a cooler and darker place. I had put it aside before I got very sick, only to find it later, after six weeks, in this poor condition. This once was an adult blooming size plant. I removed all the dead parts and put it in loose sphagnum moss and placed it in the back of the growing tent. After almost four months, it's throwing out a new growth and is even trying to grow a new flower spike. New growths are more flattened when they appear while bloom spikes have a more rounded tip. However, I will remove it because it will take all the energy out of the remaining plant and certainly will kill it. And lastly, a hybrid. These are way hardier and easier to care for. This one is mounted on Asian driftwood and accompanied by Tilantias and the young Acmea species from Brazil. Unfortunately, it dropped its last flower and the new one didn't open yet. But I'll put pictures in from previous blooms. By the way, the true species always show some shriveling in the bulbs, that's normal. While hybrids, certainly the green-leafed ones, mostly have rounded and swollen pseudobulbs. When a flower spike starts to grow, it'll take 3 to 4 months before the first flower opens. These spikes are very sturdy and don't break easy but they keep on extending for all the years it'll bloom. You can cut it back as I did and it usually branches out them, forming a new lead. However, it'll take again approximately 3 months before the new flowers open. Psychopsis are sequential bloomers, meaning that a new flower is formed or opens after the previous one died. The flowers last approximately 3 weeks and it takes another 3 weeks to open the next one. In winter, when growing in the house, she might stop flowering for a few months during the cooler and darker period. When growing conditions improve, she will start again throwing out new flowers. So don't cut the spike unless it's dying off. You could miss out on many many years of these wonderful flowers. Watering them is something you need to learn. The media may never dry out completely between waterings. If it does, you will lose roots. On the other hand, they may not stay soggy either, or the roots will rot. If you got your plant growing in compacted sphagnum moss, during the transition to another media, you must keep the roots a bit more moist, so they can adjust to the new situation. My plants are watered twice or maximum three times a week. I use reverse osmosis water, sometimes tap water. It always contains a rain mix feed. They are sprayed when needed. This usually is a mist every other day. In the home, I mist daily when temperatures are high enough and in warm weather even twice a day, in the morning and late afternoon. Recovering plants also get a spray with a seaweed solution twice a week. you enjoyed this video please drop me a message in the comment section below thanks for watching again